The next Starship integrated flight test is upon us. As early as this Thursday, we may very well see Booster 10 and Ship 28 take to the skies, so be sure to tune in right here at Lab Padre for our live coverage. Now let's look at what SpaceX has been up to this past week leading up to this week's big event. Friday marked the start of a new month and saw SpaceX's LR11000 begin preparations for lifting Ship 29 onto the test stand. Another round of concrete placement for the new office building wrapped up after sunrise as crews continue to construct the building's foundations. At the launch pad, the temporary pressurization plate was removed from Ship 28 as crews prepared to stack the vehicle for a launch wet dress rehearsal. As the build-out of the front of the Star Factory grew to the east, the cladding of the roadside hall continued to expand. Support beams for angled glass, similar to the Starlink factory in Bastrop, were installed on the western side of the wall. Continuing the build-out of tooling in Mega Bay 2, a rotary turntable deck was brought into the new bay. It appears that this was installed onto the turntable base that was seen being taken into the back right corner of the bay nine days earlier. The ship quick disconnect arm on the orbital launch tower was swung outward, clearing the way for the chopsticks ahead of stacking. The lift began an hour later, carrying Ship 28 to be stacked onto Booster 10. The stacking was performed slowly, with extra time being needed to align the ship onto the booster with the modified chopsticks. Once the ship was repositioned on the chopsticks, the ship angle and rotation was adjusted before finally being set down on the booster. Back at the build site, a hot stage ring was spotted being rolled across the ring yard from Star Factory towards the Sanchez site. Inside the launch complex, the interior of the new restroom facility is taking shape. Metal stud walls have been raised and are awaiting plumbing, electrical, and sheetrock installation. The former parking lot grounds near the suborbital launch and testing complex have been graded as workers prepare to construct the second launch pad at the complex. After stacking, the access platform was extended towards Ship 28, but unexpectedly bumped and scraped against the hull. The access platform was retracted a few minutes later and then extended once again slowly, with the worker on it making sure the ship wasn't damaged. Then, once the ship quick disconnect interface was prepared for connection, the platform was retracted again. Back at the build site, an elevated access platform was installed at the center work stand inside Mega Bay 2. With the Flight 3 stack assembled, Ship 29 was brought from Test Stand B to the orbital launch mount, which made for an impressive sight at Starbase. Ship 29 was returned to the Test Stand later in the evening to begin setting up for the engine testing. Once at the stand, the two-point lifter attached to the LR-11000 was positioned over the Starship. Workers on lifts maneuvered the attachment interfaces onto the ship's hard points. A few hours later, after the clock had ticked over to Saturday, the ship was lifted onto the stand. And over at the launch pad, the orbital launch mount work platform departed the launch pad, setting down at a safe distance away from the upcoming launch rehearsal. Meanwhile, work on the latest phase of the Star Factory expansion reached the easternmost end of the building, while another round of concrete was placed for the office building foundation. The detonation suppression system was also tested at the orbital launch mount, verifying that the launch table's gas purge and misting system was in working order. While Ship 28 and 29 were readied for testing, stitchers at the site of the new launch tower set to work, pushing hollow polymer ribbon into the sandy soil to help dewater and settle the ground. With preparations complete, workers, bystanders, and beachgoers were all ordered to evacuate for Ship 28 and Booster 10's wet dress rehearsal. Shortly after the announcement, the chopsticks were released from the ship, open and lowered down to the launch ready position. As workers drove away from the complex, the detonation suppression system was tested at the orbital launch mount. As the last of the workers departed the site, the propellant farm was started up. Cold cryogenic liquid flushed through the system step by step, purging and conditioning the pumps, feed lines and launch pad equipment for the delivery of propellants. Once the tower and launch table were chilled in, propellant loading began, pushing subcooled liquid oxygen and methane into the ship and booster. 
Over the next 45 minutes, almost two tons of propellant were loaded per second as SpaceX continued the simulated launch countdown. At T-10 seconds, shortly before the water deluge system would be activated, the rehearsal was successfully concluded and the propellants began to unload from the vehicle. Following the end of the wet dress rehearsal, the chopsticks were raised and closed around Ship 28. Not leaving any systems to chance, the water deluge system was also tested a few minutes later, assuring that the pad was well protected from the intense heat and force of Super Heavy's Raptor engines. Immediately after the end of the tests, trucks began unloading fresh deliveries of propellants at the tank farm, replenishing the stocks used in the testing ahead of next week's expected launch. Ship 29 was released from the two-point ship lifter on Monday, leaving the ship to the clamps and support umbilicals of the test pad. The work platform was brought back to the orbital launch mount and set up underneath the table and booster facilitating work access as workflows at the pad began to focus on launch preparations. A new vertical storage tank from air gas was delivered to Starbase and was brought into the Sanchez site and installed as work continues to build out the new systems and equipment across the complex. While Starbase currently handles fabrication of tankage and assembly of ships and boosters, the more complex assemblies are manufactured off-site and shipped in, such as this thrust puck, which is part of the plumbing at the base of Starship's liquid oxygen tank and delivers fuel to Starship engines. Iron work for the east side of the Star Factory expansion is nearing completion as the outer cladding continues to expand across the wall. At the site of the second launch pad, wick drains are being installed. These drains are a geotextile membrane with thin pores that let water drain out of the soil to help dry and settle loose, wet, and sandy soils. The drains are unrolled from a spool and driven down into the ground with a machine called a stitcher and then cut at the top. The outer walls of the new restrooms are fully framed in and ready for exterior covering. Blast-proof camera mounts and other equipment are being installed around the launch complex as crews set up to monitor the launch from every angle. After several weeks of work, crews began removing the scaffolding from the side of the ship quick disconnect arm. Booster 10's grid fins were put through their paces, making sure the control surfaces are ready to steer the booster during re-entry. Tuesday morning saw the lift of an autogenous pressurization pipe inside Mega Bay 1 ahead of its installation on Booster 14. These pipelines carry heated gaseous propellants to backfill the tanks as they're drained in flight. Over at the launch complex, a new small-scale jib crane was delivered to the site. A pressurization trailer used to keep ships and boosters supported with gas was relocated to the launch site as well. With the first pipe in place, the second pressurization line was lifted inside Mega Bay 1. To prevent an explosion when mixing fuel and oxidizers, the methane tank is filled with gaseous methane and the oxygen tank with gaseous oxygen. Returning to the launch complex, the ship Quick Disconnect was detached and retracted from Ship 28 and workers began taping over the interfaces to keep them clean. The Quick Disconnect arm was then swung out, clearing the way for the ship to be destacked. As a heavy fog settled in at Starbase, Ship 28 was destacked from Booster 10 to make the final preparations for launch. Various systems, such as the flight termination system, can only be armed on the ground and are only installed a few days ahead of flight. Back at the build site, Booster 14's aft and forward sections rolled out of Star Factory. The aft section was subsequently staged in front of Mega Bay 1 to await stacking while the forward section was parked behind High Bay. Various subsystems have already been installed on these segments, including the booster's engine gas purge system and the grid fin control mechanisms, as well as the ship interface clamps and actuators. A new booster transport stand is under construction at the Sanchez site to increase the number of boosters that can be tested and transported in the pre-flight preparation pipeline. Construction of the parking garage piles continues at the corner of Remedios Avenue, with crews coring out the ground and placing steel rebar cages in the holes to be filled with concrete. Several cameras in blast restraint cases stand at the top of the launch tower, which will capture the launch in as many ways as they can. A work crew modified the access platform at the end of the quick disconnect arm, trimming the corners of the frame to increase clearance to avoid hitting ships. The chopsticks released Ship 28 in the afternoon, leaving the Starship to stand free and clearing the way to ready the ship for flight. 
Booster 14's aft section was moved into Mega Bay 1 for stacking operations to wrap up assembly of the booster's liquid oxygen tank and engine sections. As usual during the month of March, fog rolled into Starbase overnight into Wednesday. When the fog lifted at the launch complex, we could see that Ship 29's flaps were deployed sometime in the evening. The fog left surprises at the build site as well, revealing that Booster 13 had been relocated to the middle stand of Mega Bay 1. Continuing launch preparations at the pad, workers removed the booster alignment pins from the orbital launch mount. Over at the rocket garden, workers began dismantling Booster 4's grid fins, which have been stuck since the booster's aborted test campaign back in 2022. Ship 29 was run through an unusual long flap test as workers spent more than an hour cycling through the movement range of each flap. The following morning, Ship 29 began its test campaign with the ship first being pressurized, then having its control valves and vents checked. A few tiles on the nose cone were also blown off during these vent tests. Workers were seen placing concrete near the rocket garden, laying foundation for more equipment or storage space. Cryo-loading on Ship 29 began in the afternoon as the vehicle was filled with a small amount of liquid oxygen and nitrogen. The test ended about an hour later with the tank deep press and no further actions from the vehicle. Glaciers began also installing glass on the Star Factory's facade, providing the first permanent view inside the facility since construction began. Outside the build site, an unknown conical piece of hardware was seen being relocated. After making its way around the outside of the Star Factory expansion, the unknown piece was brought around back and dropped off. This week at the Cape, Bob returned to port on Saturday, carrying both fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-40 mission. Signet Warhorse 3 returned to port just 30 minutes later with just read the instructions and Falcon 9 Booster 1076. The booster was quickly attached to the port crane and lifted onto the dockside stand for stowage and clearing just read the instructions for another mission. On Sunday, Falcon 9 Booster 1083 lifted off in its first flight, carrying Crew Dragon Endeavor and the four astronauts on board to the International Space Station for the SpaceX Crew 8 mission. After sending its crew to space, Booster 1083 returned to the Cape and landed at LZ-1. On Monday, a closed Falcon 9 payload fairing was brought to the Horizontal Integration Facility to be loaded onto a booster ahead of flight. Over at the docks, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 was laid onto the Horizontal Transporter for its trip to Roberts Road. Falcon 9 Booster 1073 lifted off with the Starlink Group 6-41 mission on its 13th flight, carrying 23 satellites into orbit. Doug then returned to Port Canaveral on Thursday with both fairing halves and a short fall of Gravitas with Booster 1073 on deck. Then Booster 1073 was soon transferred from a short fall of Gravitas to dockside for stowage ahead of its own trip to Roberts Road. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.